say I um, say I go out in the military and I come back home and you know I'm military. Scared. That's good. Yeah, I'm but supposed to not interrupt you, but not even not even to go home and come back. Like that's what people signing up in the military to do. What's yeah. that? To go kill people. To go kill people. True. Yeah. Right, to, yeah. To understand. Yeah. So it's like <clears throat> I, don't, I don't see how. Let me not say that. But. Go go kill people in the name of your country. Yeah, one of those social things that we was talking Defend about. In your country, right? Yeah. I'm a I'm a U.S. citizen. I'm doing it for the doing it for the flag. No, this not wrong. Yeah, I'm doing it for the flag. Yeah, I'm doing it for y'all. Don't you do it for the flag? It's good, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Go ahead, man. That's well, no, no, I'm just saying that's a good it, that's a good topic because I mean that's a good example because my the younger me I, I say man I don't ever sign up for the military because I'm I don't want to go out and kill people. Like that's just me. And I was an example I was gonna give. So say like I'm a U.S. vet, come come back home, and I just start doing irrational stuff. Like you see, like some of the mass murders. Like people go out. Like I think in L.A. Yeah, they just they I I and I thought about that when you just said that. Um, I don't know exactly what happened because like I said, I try to watch as less news as possible. <laughs> yes, yeah, myself included. The fake, the fake news. So. <laughs> Um, I, I did hear about it was uh, some kind of shooting this sometime this week, and I just saw either it was yesterday night or this morning that they put out and saying yeah the dude who did the mass shooting was a ex marine I think mm-hmm. and he may <clears throat> have been suffering from post uh, what traumatic is it? stress traumatic stress disorder Sen- yeah disorder there you so go. I guess that's his that's gonna be the excuse for him doing that. Right, you know, instead of when another a younger person or people that look like us do it, they go dig up all of their dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ten pounds of weed in the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, when they do it, let's go find some excuses. Yeah, he was an ex uh, ex marine. He might have had some. some might. Yeah. Not diagnosed, but there's a chance. Yeah, yeah. it's always a chance. <laughs> um, all this is true, man. Uh, <laughs> and I'll tell you one thing. If people would live a life of, of awareness mm. and not live a life of um, not live a life of what is the word that I am looking for? Um, I apologize, but not live this no nah, this scripted life. Uh, I know the word that I'm looking for. Compulsion is one of the words, but I can't think of the other word. But nevertheless, not live this scripted life. Same thing every day, all the time, right? <clears throat> being aware, being conscious of what's going on inside of you at every moment. And and this is the thing. Does anybody make a decision to be miserable? Like, nobody intentionally makes a decision to be miserable. Every decision that you make, you make it in the hopes of being happy. But if you are not skilled at living this thing called life, it can make you miserable, right? right? You can invest in the wrong things. You right. can unknowingly invest in misery. But everybody makes a decision with the hope that it's going to make them happy or it's going to fulfill them in some kind of way, right? right? So if you were consciously aware of the right things, knowing that anger can never fulfill you, right? You're naturally a joyful being. You're naturally a being who... Uh, de- who who desires to live in harmony and and live life to your fullest potential? Yeah. I know that because I'm looking out of your window at those trees over there, right? Mm-hmm. And no matter what, that tree is gonna always try to be the biggest, best tree it can be. Mm-hmm. It's gonna try to produce every leaf, mm-hmm. right? Every limb. It's gonna try to attract every bird, every insect. It's gonna try to be the home to as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? It's going to always do that no matter what. Hurricane come through here, tornado, like heavy rain, snow. It, like it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? It's going to always, and all of nature is like that. Yeah. A lion is going to always try to be the best lion possible. Yeah. Like it's going to try its best to catch every meal. You know what I mean? <laughs> you feel me? It's, it's going, it's all of nature tries to reach its maximum potential. And we're a part of that nature also. The only difference between us is that we have so many possibilities to where it even messes us up. Right? Because right? we're not one track. We can be anything. We can be a prince or a pauper. 
You know what I'm saying? The lion can only be a lion, so it ain't never got to try to be no caterpillars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's, it's, yeah, yeah, he ain't trying to like, man, that swimming jar look kind of cool, man. You know, I think I'm going to try that. Like, it ain't no other possibility. So, you know, with a one-track line, you you can excel at one thing. Yeah, we got so many possibilities. But what I'm saying, man, is that if you are aware, first of all, I understand that, that your nature is to excel and be the best you can possibly be. Right. Also to understand every decision that you're making, you are making it for what you think is your best fulfillment and your and your best happiness, your best joy, right? Um, and then knowing the things that actually make that happen, right? Because if you're aware of no situation, we wouldn't have to worry about no right wrong. We wouldn't have to worry about murdering folks. Mm. You would know if you were aware, like, okay, this anger could lead to this, um, and and that's not gonna make me, that's not gonna fulfill me. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's not. <laughs> That's, that's that's not going to be what I want to do with this life. You know what I mean? Um, and the right and wrong thing is a cheap substitute for that. That's all it is. It's just a, a cheap substitute for awareness, like giving people this manuscript. Um, these are all the right things. These are all the wrong things. Act accordingly and everything will be okay. Yeah. <laughs> right thing. Yeah, just do the right thing like Spike Lee, man, yeah. and everything will be okay, man. But but that's not life, dog. You know what I'm saying? That's not life. And then people come with so many. And just getting away from things like murder, just on more of a personality thing, <clears throat> that's where right and wrong thing really comes into you know what I'm saying, to play. Mm-hmm. Because when somebody acts different, differently than you do, you can't just knock that off the list as wrong. It has to be different. Right? And then you can't be unwilling to interact with different. Because then you're unwilling to live. Mm-hmm. You're unwilling to have life at that point. So, or you're unwilling to experience life at that point. Um... And that's one thing I'm working on, man. I be, I, I'm telling you, I, I'm really working on it. Um, I'm raised in the South, and I'm not going to be ashamed to say that um, I struggle having interactions with certain Caucasians. Um, and a lot of it is me, right? Because when I look at something, I still experience it through me. Right. I, I filter everything that my eyes see through all kind of thoughts and all kind of um all kind of information that I've gathered over 27 years, right? All kind of experiences is what I filter what comes through my eyes. So a lot of things, I'm not seeing things as they are. I'm seeing things as I see them. You know what I mean? And uh, I, mean, I come from a black family who was raised in the South, and I've heard all kind of stories, and I, I went to HBCU, and I've been educated on certain things. So I can look at somebody and not know them from a can of paint, and still make uh, a certain prediction on them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and it's not fair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I see a white dude with a mean mug, I might be like, oh, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not knowing not knowing what cuz going, not knowing anything. That might be cuz natural face. You know what I mean? Like, he, he might be a cool dude. But um, I just think that's one thing we got to work on, man. All right, I've been raised in the church, and I, I I know about the long list of right and wrong, but I don't really I, I don't really feel that way no more, man. You know what I'm saying? I really seek to actually like try to understand people now. Like why? You know what I mean? What what's the root cause of that? And I really realized, like I said, man, I realized this. It really came to my attention the other day at work, just watching how how people were different, because how I am, even when I wasn't. A supervisor, I still work like a supervisor, which is why I'm a supervisor. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I never sought out a position. The way I work caused people to want me to be a supervisor. You know what I mean? But when I think about why I work like that, well, I've always seen my mama work like that. Like always. She was always working. She was, she's a high energy person. Always doing something, always everywhere, right? So that's why I get that work ethic from. And um I don't know, maybe other people didn't see that. I don't know. I don't I don't know what makes us different, but that's all it is, is different. 
You know what I'm saying? And if I want to elevate somebody to a different level, I need to do it from the standpoint that this person is different than me, mm-hmm. not from the standpoint that this person is wrong right. and that I'm right. You know what I'm saying? So different is cool. Yeah. Right and wrong is not. What y'all think? Sounds good, man. I, I, I like it, bro. I, I mean, that make, make absolute sense. Um, just, I don't know what he was talking. I kind of thought about um, once again, we working at the school, um, but even with the, the the students in the class, you know what I'm saying, as far as how they learn, you know what I'm saying, I can get up and, and say this, and this student got it, he understands, right. you know what I'm saying, but this one don't, that don't make what I said wrong, or that don't make him wrong, because he didn't get it, you know what I'm saying, he just may have a different way of, of, of taking in and learning. And that don't make the other kids super smart. Right, you know what I'm saying, so that's what, man, that's why. I, being in the classroom, you have to you, you have to learn to kind of be versatile, man. Like what worked for this student may not work for that one. You know what I'm saying? But that don't necessarily mean neither one of those are wrong or that I'm wrong. You know what I'm saying? Or just because ten of the kids in the class understand it this way and this one and this one person don't, that don't mean that that's right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. And that don't make him don't. Right. Which is what our school system says it do. Mm-hmm. You know our school system says that it does. Mm-hmm. No offense on you. <laughs> <laughs> but Doing just doing my job. I understand, man, but the, 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 I mean, you right, bro. And we'll talk about the school system on another podcast. What you got, what, what you got to say, Charles? Um, I agree with both of y'all. Um, just sitting over there thinking, like, this is a different examples of, um, like, disciplining your kids. I know a lot of people think, think of that, right or wrong, for example. Us, mm, that's a good one. Us, uh, <laughs> us, I won't say black folk, I'd say minorities. Minority people like discipline, they can't be spot. I remember growing up, I remember growing right. up, just being around certain family members like my mom, like she would tell me every time I go to Walmart, like, hey, go in here, I ain't about to buy nothing. Touch nothing, don't ask nothing. Don't ask nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> ain't that crazy, bro? Before you going anywhere, bro. And um, another person might view our discipline different. Like the other day, I seen seen this lady getting down on her son, just like let him have it. Hit me? Oh, well, I want to say give him love taps. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> he just said, give him, did he think it was love taps? Nah, he thought it was hits. Nah, but we're gonna I, go with hits. I was looking and I saw a Caucasian lady behind her. her Mouth just dropped. Like, is she really doing this in here? Um, to her, she probably like, this is unacceptable. This is totally wrong. To her, you know, she she was like, I would have done this different. I would have told told my son, we get home, we go on the timeout, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like oh. the cute devils, man. It's just like, yeah. Oh, you funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's many examples we could go through that people would say, okay, it's right or wrong, but first, like I said, people don't understand people the way they think. So, just, so to them, it's right or wrong, but to. Uh, what black people get that from? <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, I mean really? Kid. Like, yeah, where you get that from? What, like, being a kid discipline? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's passed down pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's, it's, it's passed down because uh, acting a certain type of way. And a certain day could get you killed as a black person. Okay. Okay. So black people have always it, it started off as a survival thing, right? Right. Like I have you have to act certain what type of way because if you don't, your life could be at risk. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, like we talk about with awareness and mindfulness, that's not I well, I don't want to say that that's not necessarily the case no more because I still see folks getting taken out. But nevertheless, it's not uh just obvious Jim Crow like it used to be, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, that's where that comes from. Just passed down through generation, through generation, through generation. I was talking to my pastor um, earlier this week, and he, he was kind of kind of almost discussing the same thing. He called it a customized way of thinking, mm-hmm. basically. You know, like you say, what you grew up on, what you saw in your household when you was growing up, or with your family members when you were at their house, you know. So he's like, you, know, you pay attention when you get older, you start kind of doing the same stuff with your family. That's not the way to live, though, dog. No, it's not. That's not the way to live. Like, you can't live life off memorization. Mm-hmm. Like, this ain't no test. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got to think about situations. Think, like, think about stuff. Yeah. Like, work through it. Be aware of what's going on. Be aware of what's going on in your heart. Be aware of why you beating your kids. Why am I beating my kids? I don't want to beat my I think I'm beating my kids because my mom beat the fool out of me. How did I turn out? I'm beating my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Not only am I beating my kids, I'm beating them in front of everybody in the store. I'm beating in front of everybody in the store. I'm angry. I'm angry. I'm, I'm beating my kids because I'm angry. This ain't got nothing to do with survival. This ain't got nothing to do with thinking that somebody about to come kill him if I don't teach him how to act. It has nothing to do with the original reason why it happened. You know what I'm saying? We are generations removed, still doing the same thing because nobody stopped to think about it. Yeah. Nobody stopped to think about why. You just beating your kids because you mad and you got bad self-control. Hmm. That's why you beating your kids. And your son acting out because you got bad self-control, so he got bad self-control. Damn, that's what's wrong. You're the problem. Yeah, you need to be. He don't know why he doing what he doing. Y- y'all need to be together. <laughs> come, come over here. <laughs> I jump over there behind us. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You know, like, man. Listen, bro. If it's gonna take some conscious minds, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's really gonna take some conscious and some aware minds, man. Cause, man, this a place of love. Like I say, man. I'm telling you. Oh, man. This has been blessing me lately. But when I get in certain situations, man. Like I just said, bro. To think about a tree. The other day I was meditating and I'm telling you, I'm just sitting here looking at this tree, bro, and it's blowing my mind what's going through my head. Like, dog, this tree don't care, bro. It don't care what's going on. It's still about to be a tree, homie. You ain't stopping it. Like, you can't do nothing to stop this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can look at whatever. You can look at a cloud. You can look at a cat. You, <laughs> you can look at that turtle. You can look at, like, nothing you about to do. Listen, child, you can put that turtle in that tank and all that. You're not about to stop that man from turtle. <laughs> so you're not you're not stopping nothing, bro. You're not gonna stop the man from turtling. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yo, you know these folks, <laughs> they wonder why they walk in the lion cage and the lion kill him because he a lion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you thought you had, you ain't stop that man from lioning. You know what I'm saying? He's still he's still a lion. Like say he might have been in the zoo for ten years. Man, bro. try he could have been in the zoo all his life. He could have never been out. Still got that instinct in him. Come man. on, man, the man a lion. <laughs> he <laughs> might not run up on no antelope, but he gonna run up on you. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? So uh something to lead the people with, dog. Man, I gotta lead I gotta lead the people with love, homie. I got to, man. Um, first of all, love yourself. Love yourself to always strive to be the best that you can be inside, on the inside. If you take care of the inside, the outside will come. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if I had to think of a, a can of scripture, what comes to my mind is we did it in our devotion one day on the, on the call. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. And I think before that they were talking about the worrying and who can add one tittle to their life by worrying and so on and so forth. But man, <clears throat> seek ye first. And what we say the kingdom of heaven was, the kingdom of heaven, we called it God's way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Or, the, you know, not 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 mm-hmm. getting religious, but just spiritual, man. Just as, on a spiritual aspect, the natural way that things go. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is a loving universe. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Grass need water. It rains. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, this is a loving, giving Fully operating, cooperating universe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just how that's how the universe is. So when we think about uh, when we think about that kingdom, man, that's that's what it is, and that's what we're supposed to be seeking, man. So uh, love, brother. I mean, seek seek it first and foremost inside yourself. Seek to love yourself, um, and and find out what loving yourself means. Find out what you actually require, what you need as a human. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, forget what your mom and your daddy said. Yeah. Forget what your pastor said. You know, one of the, one, one, with the church thing, you know what I said, bro? I gotta, I gotta see who God is for myself, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't serving my mama God. Cause I don't know who he is. You know what I'm saying? He make you shout, he make you turn up, and that's all good. If, you feel me? But, I gotta see who he is for myself, cause I ain't shouting. Yeah. And I don't feel like, it. You know what I'm saying? I gotta see who it is, man. See what life is for yourself, man. Get your own understanding. Get seek truth, dog. You know what I'm saying? For real, seek truth, man. 
Um, but like I said, man, if I had to see, lead the people with anything, bro, if you love yourself, loving yourself, being awareness and mindfulness, uh, knowing what you're thinking in certain situations, why you're thinking them, and how they're going to benefit you, then you'll have no choice but to love others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It'll be, the, it'll be the natural outcome, the natural outpour from loving yourself. What y'all got? Man, for me, man, I, I just kind of what we talked about today, man, just before you think somebody else wrong, just stop and think about it, you know, think about not only why they may have done this, but why you doing this is wrong and what makes you right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I encourage everybody to do to do that as well, man. But I also want to leave people and, and really start encouraging more people to really, really get into that meditation, man. I think meditation will uh, free up a lot of people, man. I think it'll make them feel a whole lot better now. Um, you know, before when I first started the little meditation, I was kind of doing the guided meditation. But, mm-hmm. you know, now I kind of just do my own thing. Yes, sir. And I, and I really love it, man. It's like I do my meditation. I go into a place where I see it, man. I go right at the dock, sit down on the end of the dock, and I'm just swinging my feet, though, and I'm just sitting there. This in your mind? Yeah. Okay. In my mind. And all, all my thoughts just flying across my head. And I'm seeing them, and I'm letting them go. You know what I'm saying? I just sit there in peace, man. And, and that's, that's like, really like the best part, the best part of my day, man. It really is, bro. Meditation yeah. has become the best part of my day. It is. Man, just sitting there <clears throat> being able to be aware of all your thoughts, but not being, not being bounded to them. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Just, just, like I say, just let them, they like, 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 I don't know what you call it, shooting stars, just mm-hmm. shooting through back and forth. And I see them, but they, you know, I'm not getting attached to them or letting them go on about their business. Well, I'm just sitting here in peace, man. And so that's what I like to leave y'all with, man. I encourage y'all to get on the meditation and just before you say somebody else is wrong, think about what makes you so right. That's what I got. I like that. Both of y'all are good, man. Love. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, um, well, I'm gonna leave the people with man. Just pretty much what we talked about today, man. You just you see, you never you never know what a person's going through. Um, so what I want to leave people with is just um, embracing people, man. Just get to understanding people. Strike up strike up conversation, man. Just try to get to understand people. Um, cause like I said, you you may not know what the person may thinking decisions they make or you know how they're conducting themselves because like I say you don't know you don't understand and you know the next person will understand me if they if they don't you know seek out to talk to me or vice versa um but um yeah man just like I said just reaching out to people um iron shock or iron so I like to say um but yeah that's 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 for another podcast but yeah uh <laughs> My bad. But uh yeah, like I said, man, just uh also man, try to do a good deed, man. Like do something out of the box this week, man. Try to um you know, go out and buy roses for your wife, go buy roses for your mom. No, I took care of that. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll check that off the list. Yeah. Yeah, I know, man. But <laughs> But yeah, man, she funny. But yeah, like I said, man, just do a good deed, man. Just Go outside the box and try to do something that you haven't done. And, um, yeah, man. Um, so if I want to leave people, man, it's just, uh, communication, man. Just effective communication. Um, just get understanding and, um, just find reasoning behind people's thoughts and stuff like that. It all sounds good, my friend. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. We have to go. Travis keeps looking at his time. He has another engagement. So we're going to. And I'm looking at, I just got a, you know, I do my fantasy football. Oh. I just got an alert that said Gronk ain't going to be playing this week. So I'm trying to find him. Yeah, I was trying to oh, find man. a tight end. I thought you were checking that time out, man. Yeah, man, we're going to get you out of here in time, yeah. man. You're not going to be late. Hey, we always want you to subscribe, comment, share, repost. We want, <laughs> we say it all the time, but I'm serious. We want to have a conversation. Yeah. Um, want to know what you think. Know how you feel, and we want you to let other people hear what we're talking about. Um, let us know if you think it's relevant. Yeah. Let us know how you feel about it, how how it affects your life. You may have even better examples than we do. All kind of examples. Uh, some triumph, some 
quote unquote defeat right. or failures, but everything is something to learn from. What if, man? What possibility begins? I'm your boy CJ. It's your boy Trav. It's your boy Jarvis, man. Hey, man, we out. Peace. Peace.